Katie Sutton, the other co-principal here at Randolph Union. And we wanted to have this forum tonight to sort of help shape our work for next year. Um, last school year, it feels like a long time ago, we went through some um, mission and vision work facilitated by the Vermont School Boards Association. So we were asked to do some strategic planning and get some information about priorities, and we did that. Um, at the district level, but what we really want to think about um, is what that might look like in our school context and how we can incorporate families in helping us to shape that vision and really finding ways to include families more. So this is our first forum um, and jump into that world so that hopefully we can structure our family engagement um, really thoughtfully next fall. So um, we've planned this agenda to jump right into that work, and I'm going to hand things over um, to my co-Roland Fellow from 2015. We focused a lot on advisory and facilitation, and Angela Bauer will take things from here. She's also a ninth grade English teacher. Thank you. Can you believe it's been that long? No. no. <laughs> so wild. No, no. Um, but it was such a good time um, to get, I'm Angela Bauer, I teach ninth grade English. Um, I also have taught seventh grade English here as well. Um, and advisory is a really important part of the work that I do. And I feel like the work that Lisa and I did in 2015 as Roland Fellows um, really helped bring our school community together. We talked a lot about adult advisory and making connections and when the adults in the building feel connected and can communicate well, we're just so much better for our students. So that was a really important part of our work. Um, part of that work um, led us to bring people together in a circle and just the power of that shape as, you, as my students here know, and I should acknowledge you guys too. Thank you so much for coming. We have some student voices here tonight when we heard Family Forum and we we're talking about um, what our vision is for the future. It's like we should invite everybody and get some student voice in here too. So thank you so much for coming tonight. I appreciate you. Um, so we're going to start tonight with what's called a wagon wheel. Do you want to explain that? No? Okay. Um, and we didn't know how many people we would have. So we're going to just adjust a little bit to the number of people. Are you willing to participate? Sure. Okay. sure. And I'll participate as well. Would you like to participate in our circle? Sorry? Would you like to participate in the circle or are you? Uh, no, you no I better okay. be more objective than on the outside. <laughs> okay, I just wanted to invite you if you wanted to be part of it. Okay, so I will participate as well as facilitate. Mm -hmm. um, so we are going to do a wagon wheel kind of process to think about where we are in our work in our school right now. So here's the exciting part. Get up, stand up, and find a partner. A group of us can actually see some stuff here. <laughs> I got she you would be you know, yeah. uh, Usually I have kids stand up, partner, and then you high five, and that's how I know visually that everybody has a partner. Come on, you're with me. <laughs> Thank you for okay. joining. No, you're gonna have to stay standing. Oops. Sorry, <laughs> without lack of clarity. Um, so you have your partner. Now, with your partner, I was going to make a suggestion that we have ice cream for everybody at the end of the night. That can't happen. But if we did, one of you gets vanilla and one of you gets chocolate. Choose with your partner who gets vanilla and who gets chocolate ice cream. Okay, so keep in mind who is vanilla and who has the chocolate. Okay, and I'm gonna hand out an excerpt um, um, it's an excerpt actually from a sermon from 
from a Unitarian minister in Massachusetts. Did everybody get one? My, my old granny reading spectacles in my classroom, so I'll do my best. You won't mind. Um, <laughs> thank you. If I stumble, I might like throw it over to you. Um, it's called, And How Are the Children? <clears throat> Among the most accomplished and fabled tribes of Africa, no tribe was considered to have warriors more fearsome or more intelligent than the mighty Maasai. It is perhaps surprising then to learn the traditional greeting that passed between Maasai warriors. Kasir Ngera, one would always say to another. It means, and how are the children? It is still the traditional greeting among the Maasai, acknowledging the high value that the Maasai always place on their children's well-being. Even warriors with no children of their own would always give the traditional answer, all the children are well. Meaning, of course, that peace and safety prevail. The priorities of protecting the young, the powerless, are in place. That Maasai people have not forgotten the reason for being, its proper function and responsibilities. All the children are well means that life is good. It means that the daily struggle of existence, even among poor people, do not preclude proper caring for its young. I wonder how it might affect our consciousness of our own children's welfare if, in our culture, we took to greeting each other with this same daily question, and how are the children? I wonder if we heard that question and passed it along to each, to each other a dozen times a day, if it would begin to make a difference in the reality of how children are thought of or cared for in this community. I wonder if every adult among us, parent and non-parent alike, felt an equal weight for the daily care and protection of all the children in our town, in our state, in our country. I wonder if we could truly stay, say without hesitation, the children are well. Yes, all the children are well. What would it be like if the president began every press conference, every public appearance by answering the question, and how are the children, Mr. President? If every governor of every state had to answer the same question at every press conference, and how are the children, Governor? Are they well? Wouldn't it be interesting to hear their answers? So I'm going to ask you now, those who have the vanilla ice cream, to form a small circle in the center of this space. Vanilla ice cream? Yes, you already know. So form the circle first because people who don't know it well. Okay, so you form your circle. Yes, a kind of a tight knit circle. And then you're going to turn your backs to each other. And those of you who are partners on the chocolate side are going to stand facing your partner. How much time? Well, we're going to do a minute of peak. Let's start with a minute and see how it goes. And then if we, if we need to shrink it, sometimes we need to adjust it. Really. Okay. So this is what we call a wagon wheel activity. My classroom, are you okay? Yeah. Okay. <laughs> is this more good than you bargained for? Yeah. Yes. Yes. Okay. Okay. Little, little low risk, but risk <laughs> nonetheless. I understand. I can hold it. Your bag's still okay. Okay. So in this wagon wheel, those on the inside, I would like you to start responding to this prompt. We're going to have one minute each. And those on the outside are just listening. I encourage you to respond with body language that is encouraging, nodding, showing that you're listening. But really, your job on the outside is just to listen. And the goal of the person on the inside is just to keep talking for the whole minute, which pushes you sometimes to keep going with other things that maybe you didn't even know you had in you that you were going to say. So thinking first about that that excerpt. On a scale of 1 to 10, 1 meaning the children are in danger, and 10 meaning they're well and they're thriving, rate how the children are doing in the school and, and the community. You can think about it outside of the school if you want to, and why. So on a scale of 1 to 10, what is your number and why? And you have one minute inside circle, begin. 
I think it's gotten definitely gotten worse during the pandemic. So we'll do one more one minute now for the outside circle to respond. Did that feel like it was pushing just enough? <laughs> or, um, no. Okay. So one minute for the outside circle to respond to that same question. What would your rating be, one through ten, on how are the children? Why? My first thought was going to be a lot. I mean, I feel like there's a lot of that our school community, our Randolph community, could do to shift that number that you have in your mind, like where we're at, closer to 10. Because when 10 would be nice. Right, 10 would be awesome. You know, so what's one thing our school community could do to shift the number closer to 10? Begin. Um, I I participated last year in a strategic plan and one of the most things was getting parents more involved and celebrating the kids' logic. I feel like a lot of parents come to sport events, but they're not necessarily coming to like science or I don't know, some project thing. What I learned is uh, the students, when they see their parents come to the school and they celebrate that, it was just an hour for them, half hour. They know that they were here and they care more about it themselves. So, so I think it's a good 
Yeah. More opportunities for us. In terms of like athletics and Okay, so same. Okay, so same question for the inner circle. What could our RU community do to move that number closer to ten? Of course, I kind of look at things differently a little bit. Things like just the role and such. I think you can see that. I feel clear expectations about all of the students. I like the idea of I don't see the same sense of community. I feel like the school is strong, but it's a Okay, outside circles turn to move to places to the left. Okay, so now the inside circle will start this time. Again, you have one minute to respond to that next question. You're, yeah, thanks. I'm so excited that you're just. <laughs> um, what is one thing, so we talked about the RU community, what's one thing you could do personally? to help shift this number closer to 10. I would encourage my children to have a regular discussion as we start over here at the center of one another in two ways about the environment, try to do an environment on the house like this, and of course, the top of the house like this, try to also do a certain type of change. I was just saying, I think it's a good point of relationship. Multiple aspects of the field, critically connected to the people that are in the field. Services, guys, I don't know if there are things that I would exert in trying to get out of the next person. But I feel like there's this, you know, petitioning for that. I was going to be able to student Congress, I was going to be able to increase the rules of the system when I get involved. Pep rallies will increase the He's saying everything. He's putting all the details on the phone. I don't know. 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 I
So let's move the inner circle one to the left. Okay, so with this one minute, um, so outer circle starts first this time. Um, if you were to put yourself in our students' shoes, what is one thing you would like to see change in the school experience? Outer circle? but it's especially for other campuses to like focus on their education so I feel like that's like really important to that I don't know how much and so that question is like how it's hard to talk for me. It's like seconds go by. All right, nice job. Next group. Thank you. Good timing. I appreciate you. Same question. Begin. Sorry. So student <laughs> shoes. In my education, I think I would want to, 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 to be allowed to critically think, to get like different ideas to flood into me, and then to have time to think about those different ideas and exchange ideas with other children, possibly have debates and do research on topics so that me as an individual that I can I can mold myself and the person I think I should be as I grow older uh, and try and become more confident and just to be able to outside of school. Because I think critical thinking is really important to just get through life. I think it's going to be presented with all kinds of situations. Thank you for sharing this wagon wheel experience. Um, I'm thinking for, I loved hearing, like one of the downfalls of the wagon wheel is that we didn't get to talk and we don't all get to hear everybody's voices. I'm wondering if it would be possible for us to just make a big circle with our chairs and just do a quick debrief, would that be okay? Mm -hmm. Yes. That sounds great. Of course. Mm -hmm. I know I am everywhere, so. <laughs> pretty preschool. I was pretty anti-talking piece when we started the <laughs> advisory training, but I've been converted, so. Um, yeah. Me too. Yeah. Um, and I didn't bring one because I didn't think it would be, I wasn't sure what, how, what our numbers would be or it, how useful it would be, but it's important to share, I think, to those of you in the community who maybe don't know. Um, it's a really important tool to help honor one voice at a time. So the talking piece is something that you typically hold 
and only the person with the talking piece is speaking at that point. Um, and even kid, and you always have the option to pass. And when you pass, the beauty of the talking piece, I think, is when you're holding it, everybody is still noticing you and noticing that you are part of the circle and part of what's happening here. And so that can be really important. Um, so I'm just going to hand in the imaginary talking piece, I guess, today, because I didn't think anything that. Um, but I'm curious in terms of a debrief, um, wondering what you noticed about that wagon wheel experience. Can I go to you first? Would you feel comfortable? Yeah. Okay. Um, some, some people that I talked to like felt the same way about getting like parents and just the community in general like more interactive with the school because I feel like having because we only have certain things that we do, like a senior project night and like a science night or something. I feel like doing stuff like that more like would help bring people together because people seeing like what you go to school for and not just like, oh, my kid goes to school is like a lot different because they can actually see what you learn. It means a lot when you like your parents come in and look at it all the progress you've done and if they, I feel like if they don't pay attention to what you do then you start slipping something away from like your grades get bad and stuff like that happens so I feel like if we were just more interactive it would be better for us um, I feel as though like if students and teachers were more community or communicative is that communicative? Yeah, communicative to each other. It would be easier for us to like be able to get down in our heads like this is the word, like this is what is expected of us instead of like, I don't know, at the beginning of the year things just like pushed onto us because it was right out of COVID and we were all like in a rush to be able to get the year normal. And I feel like us being more whatever you communicative like that is better for us to understand both ways. Like you get, or if we talk to you about like getting an expansion or something, like we need more time and some kids just take longer and it's easier for us to communicate with that with the teacher so the teacher knows and like we're on good terms for our school community. So I think, one, so one of my points during the wagon wheel, not only mine as well, is that I heard a lot about, you know, more positivity. Um, and I, I don't believe that there isn't any positivity. That's not what I'm saying at all, but I feel like there can always be more. And um, I was mentioning um, uplifting, more uplifting events, you know, like pep rallies. <coughs> Um, I'm a big supporter of pep rallies um, <laughs> because, you know, I feel like it brings more people out to the sports events and it probably makes people, um, you know, more aware about what's going on in the community and what um, it probably makes them enjoy to be at, at school more often. <laughs> um, but I feel like, you know, anything we can do to, you know, Involving the community, I was, you know, I was talking about that as well as um, I believe is very important. And, um, you know, because there are, there are students who go home and they say this, you know, this is what I'm doing in school. And the parents have, ex have no idea, you know, what the student is talking about. And um, maybe there would be less confusion and less... Um, I really cannot think of the word. Um, less, I guess less confusion in the household um, when it comes to, you know, say this person, um, like uh, Jesse was saying, think how the grades are going down. Well, maybe it is a topic that the student is not very familiar about or something or Basically that where if the parents are able to see, you know, that maybe the student did put out a great piece of work 
and, and you know they received a great grade for it then the parents themselves get to see you know oh wow you know my student is doing really well so thank you um, one of the things that this reminded me of particularly when I talked to Jesse she was talking about positivity and events like a couple of weeks ago we had a basketball tournament and brought everybody together and everyone was really cheering and it was very positive. But also that made me think about Green Up Day, which the middle school did and the high school didn't. Um, but it was so, kids really felt strongly that they were doing something good for the community. Um, and it reminded me of some of the PBL work that we had done, project-based learning work that we did pre-COVID that required strong communication skills, executive function like planning and prioritizing and some of the work that we did in the community um, and how good people felt when they were helping other people who, who needed genuine help. So it wasn't something that we made up as an activity for people to practice those skills, but it was real and it was something that engaged people and was really positive and I'm looking forward to more of that kind of work. I just, I appreciate this because I, I really appreciate the, the written piece and thinking, you know, and how are the children as our focus here and that sometimes we deviate from that focus and deviate from this idea of like the last prompt asked us to do looking at the school through the eyes of the students. Um, so Angelina and I talked about like how we amplify student voice and I was talking to you, Angela, about how much, um, how creative and flexible and versatile we've had to be throughout the pandemic. And what that has taught me anyway is that we have to listen to students more about the ways in which they want to approach learning and honor the things that you all do outside of school too. And validate that as learning <laughs> and find ways to capture that um, and give even more agency and choice and voice to students who really are the ones who have even more agency than they think to carve out what the culture and climate of this school should be. So, me, and I apologize, Tate, but I'm actually taking my ideas as, as, as people are talking because it allows me to kind of process that stuff a little bit later. But same thing, Angelina kind of plays on a theme that, that she had started, that this idea of finding ways to establish a lot stronger links between the students, um, kind of amongst themselves, so that they're creating their own safety net. Um, you know, if those relationships are strong, they're looking out for one another. Um, they're the ones that know if somebody is struggling and hasn't gotten help and can come and, and talk with a, a trusted adult um, to kind of connect them up with a, with a help that they can need. Um, but also, as part of kind of trying to get those folks connected, you know, starting off with a really strong peer mentoring program so that when the kids are transitioning up, especially from the middle school, we put them with an awesome senior or an awesome junior. Um, so they've got a couple of faces that can show them the, the, the ropes um, that can work with them on any of the problems that they might be um, encountering, the struggles that they might encounter as they work their way through the school. Um, but also, playing along with what, what Lisa said on the idea of the service piece is that, you know, one of the new traditions could be um, we do or enter into the um, presidential community service Right. So it's a volunteer program that students that put in, you know, certain levels of hours with the bronze, the silver, and the gold. Uh, not only does it get you out connected with the, the community and doing some great things, but it's also really good and resume when you're ready for college. Uh, so just, just some ideas that have come up from the conversations. I uh, started the wagon wheel thinking about how families and parents can come into the building more often and be more involved because when kids see that they value their own work so I want I want kids my own and their friends to know that we think it's important and it is important and I want to they don't always share everything either so like Evan said they might tell me what they're doing but 90% of the time they don't even tell me what they're doing you know they'll fry it out of them and they still don't know fully what they what they learned in that lesson plan so coming in on a more regular basis would be great for me I love coming to sporting events but I would love coming to three or four nights a year just on science or just on math or just on other courses to learn have a relationship with that teacher a little bit uh, and see what the other students are doing too 
what I got out of the wagon wheel, especially from the younger students here today, is um, how much important it is to schedule more fun. Like, and, and Lisa did a really good job of just explaining the, the important skill sets you learn from all that, but I mean, just, just making it fun is important too, because then Angelina would be getting those relationships with teachers and the safety net, and I think it's okay to just schedule fun once in a while. I know we have a lot of things that get done, but they'll get done better if we're all having fun along the way. I think there was a common theme, even though we didn't all talk to each other. You guys called it positivity. We called it more community involvement over here. But we were basically talking about the same thing, you know, encouraging parents to understand what's going on in school and creating a line of communication between students and adults to, so that they know what's going on in school. Um, me personally, I, I'd like to integrate in a classroom once in a while and just see what's being taught, how you know students are interacting with each other, how students are interacting with teachers. Um, I also think that this would be a really good idea for students and maybe if we started it in small groups in classrooms and then expanded it um, through advertising from the students through, through to the parents saying, hey, this is gonna be a, a much bigger event on this evening and we you know, got together 10 small groups like this and then threw us all in the auditorium or the whatever uh, next door and, and had this type of conversation. I think it could really grow the school you know, way beyond what the 10 of us can do. Um, but yeah, I think maybe you do this in small groups in the school to kind of build it up so there's more student involvement. I mean, there's 600 kids and we have three. So we gotta get more of them involved and we've got two parents and we gotta get more of them involved. Well, I, I would say a lot of what he said, um, you yeah, know, this wagon wheel thing's amazing. We don't have this down problem and I, I'm definitely gonna talk to her about this. Um, I do like the thought of being able, as a parent, to come to a school and like shadow a class for a day you know, don't, don't talk to me, I won't talk, but I'm just gonna sit and observe and see how things go in a classroom, you know, between the teachers and the students, and that also might strike up a conversation of how I can help my student <coughs> make it better in the classroom, you know, not just with her teacher or the principal, but with another student, you know, just from things that I'm able to observe as just someone watching. And definitely want the kids to have a safe space to have discussions on why they may. My important thing is for kids to be able to make sure they're in a safe space to have their disagreements respectfully. Mm -hmm. And that's another important thing I think that could make kids happy. Thank you. Mm -hmm. yeah, I would echo a lot of what's been said. I think um, to John's point, we, prior to the pandemic, oh, we had a lot of circles. We functioned this way a lot. I use the wagon wheel a lot in my classroom because it does invite that communication. But even though you're not talking to everybody, you do get a sense of like, what's the vibe in the room or what's our culture? Um, so we do use that a lot. I think we could expand it for sure. And I think particularly among the adults and having the adult and young people conversations, I think we could do more of. Um, what I always notice is it's time to like reinvigorate advisory that really helped create relationships and um, perpetuate those interpersonal relationships in a way that kids felt safe, they knew who they could go to, they knew um, who to go to if a peer was having, you know, the, talking about the safety net, like they knew who they could trust to talk with other people um, about just keeping people safe and, and keeping people buoyant. I appreciate, David, your conversation, I feel like in our first pandemic year back, that was so different from any other year that I've had in my 15 years of teaching. Like, we played a lot of kickball, and we played a lot of grammar kickball, so I could pull in the, like, so we're still out there, we're still talking about grammar, but we're still having fun. So I appreciate that, but I think when you guys on the days when we have fun, you're like more engaged in the learning. You're like, wow, 
that went fast, or we, we got through that lesson, and we really just thought we were like having fun and hanging out. So I appreciate that feedback. I think the more we can encourage teachers, because I think there there is some pressure on a teacher to to justify that fun, that use of fun time, or um, and I think if we can eliminate that a little bit and, and demonstrate how like having fun together helps us create bonds and relationships that are way more important than than how to use a semicolon. Yes. And Jessica um, did want to add. So I feel like parents tend to look at like bad grades that a kid has. Like I don't know. Obviously every parent is different, but feel like involving people more in what you do every day like because one bad grade like doesn't reflect how you are as like a student or a person and it just feels like the more interactive we are the better it will be but I definitely think adding like the fun days into it like sometimes we go outside and have science class outside helps you like want to be there like want to be interactive in school. Sure. So thank you. I, you kind of whispered in like, can I go again? So I'm just going to send it around again if there are any last thoughts that anybody can share. And you can feel free to just pass them. Or you can add to anything and get other things to follow up for you. I definitely feel like right now we're adding English with the Innovation Center. It's like super fun because we had the whole book and the journal parts and then the whole, like, we had to do the prompts for the reading. But like adding that innovation center into it, like made it really fun to like actually be able to pick an animal and have to like print it out of the um, machine. The laser like, print. Yeah, maybe the So like adding the fun definitely it helps and like hands-on things help us learn more. I feel as though I'm a hands-on learner. I love hands-on things because it's like it actually clicks in my brain to be like, oh yeah, like that actually makes sense. But I don't think that where we're at right now, we should, where our school should focus on a lot more. So I'm wondering how we can make students leaders how can how can we how we can increase student leadership and I will use an example so I think that so I do announcements currently and I, I get you know five people every Thursday coming up to me I'll say great job great job so I'm wondering how creative we can get with it so <laughs> Miss Allard down at the Tech Center asked me to do Ghost TV next year. So that is my example in saying, like, how can we have students increase the energy of others? How can we have students bring up, you know, enlighten the mood? And how can we have students, you know, become leaders? And that's all I have to say, but I just want to student leadership is something I advocate for. Awesome. I'm going to pass. I'm enjoying hearing all of you. I'm enjoying hearing all of you too and at the risk of sounding like a cliched educator, learning should be fun. <laughs> um, so it, it heartens me to hear from all of you about ways that it could be more fun. Um, and what you're, you know, what you're, it's just, it's leading me to think a lot about how much more input we could be gathering from all of you about the directions we should be moving in as far as what does make learning more fun? What are there opportunities for you all to do as leaders in the school that would feel really good? Um, that's it. More of, a, more of a question than a, a statement as in trying to figure things out as folks are talking. In terms of the, the beneficial things that, that were presented, what is the current state? I mean, do they exist now in some form? Or are they here, are they here, are they here, or they just don't exist? If that makes sense. What do you think? I'm 
always great to have this. What are you going to do on Ghost TV? <laughs> you can't answer that. <laughs> are you going to like interview students? Or? Can't answer that yet. Yeah. Yeah. I'm interested to see that. I think that could be great. Um, so I have another, oh, you want to go again? I think they want to open it up. <laughs> yeah, okay. Yeah. Oh, okay. Okay. So, no, and that's great. So I love that you want to respond, and also if, I think we talked a little bit, it kind of came up naturally as to why we would do something like this in a meeting or in a classroom, like it just invites this kind of authentic dialogue. Um, so we can go around again, you can respond to questions or comments that you've heard, and let's just suspend the talking piece that we didn't actually have and give it a more free form dialogue. Um, and so anything that bubbles up, we'll just see how it goes and we'll just keep an eye on time so that we can move on to the next, the next so about 10 minutes or so, depending on how it's Yeah, okay. great. Um, just, I was gonna say like teacher appreciation like really helps out because when a teacher comments on like a piece of work that you've done or like how well you've been doing like it really means a lot I think it was Miss Bauer at the beginning of the year that sent out note cards to every kid um, just telling them like what they've been doing good like everything and I understand like a teacher's job is probably pretty hard and stressful but like being a student's hard and stressful too so little things like that that like teachers do as pick-me-ups are like really impactful on like how you do your school and like it makes you want to get that recognition that you kind of deserve for doing it. Yeah. Um, to add on to Genesis, I definitely feel like parents do focus on your bad grades more than they focus on the good grades and I feel like when a teacher does come up to you and like, you did really well on that piece of work you had done, and then uh, like, when you would do bad, some teachers are like, you could have done that. But like, it's like, you could put it more in a positive way and be like, there's so many things that you could fix on this and it could be so great and like, I'll help you out. But, like, have that connection as to where the student feels you can, or that they can go to you and be like, I need your help on this, can you help me? And then have that help, whereas like the teacher, or some teachers can be like, well, you've had all this time. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah. I mean, I'm sorry to interrupt, Lane, would you, Share your question. Yeah, yeah, that's, that's, yeah. that's exactly what I was just really? about to ask. So the, the thing that was coming to mind as people were talking is that there, there were a lot of good things that were, that were mentioned um, that, that folks felt that there should be more of. And so the basic question is, do those things exist now? If they do, at what level do they exist? Is it, you know, is, is it a lot? Is it enough? Is it, you know, really poor? Is it where is it at? Um, so, I'm trying to think about how to make this so that I don't have to go over each specific thing that we talked about. Um, if we're talking about, say, you know, things that, you know, say uplifting things, right? I would say that there's no doubt, you know, that it does happen. It happens. Probably not enough. That, that is my opinion as well. Um, I feel like there definitely could be more of, um, you know, going back again to like um, pep rallies or, you know, things to just involve the students, you know, more and, um, you know, something to distract them, for lack of a better word, from, um, say the hardships that um, and so I would say yes there are you know great and positive things that happen absolutely could there be more absolutely but you know you don't want to bring it to the level where there's no learning being done mm -hmm. 
And so, obviously, there are to be many more discussions about how to, you know, kind of generalize that down into a specific area of how like, how many things happen per year, so so to speak. Um, yeah, that's my answer. Do you want to answer that question? Um, I kind of want to just add on to yours. Okay. Yeah. I feel like. Evan's right. I'm like, I don't want to go to the extreme point where like there is no learning. But like, I was thinking, like once a month we could do a pep rally, get the whole school community together, and like have the time to like actually put our school into like thought and be like, oh, well, this is what has happened this month, and like this is what our school is doing. This is what we can have. But this is what we can do to have fun for this day and like take a break from all the hard work you guys have done. I'm just taking to mind how hard students actually work and how hard students, or not students, teachers work at the same time. I wonder if that looks like, not always like a pep rally once a month it seems overwhelming to me. <laughs> like a lot of pep rallies. <laughs> Three a year. I, but I wonder about like a community meeting. Like yeah. if we came together and had thoughtful dialogue and acknowledgement of what's been going on mm -hmm. in the last month. Like we can't do a celebration of learning every month. No. That dilutes yeah. the joy of the celebration of learning at the end of the year. But I think we could come together either at grade level mm -hmm. or at like we could find some way, I think, to honor the hard work that everybody's doing and I appreciate that you included teachers in that as well. And yeah, and just have have some way to connect and communicate and kind of just check in with like how are things how are the children right now? And and then acknowledge like and what can we do better and what could we shift if we need to in those community meetings. I know sometimes community meetings in a school can feel like here's a teacher running this community meeting, but then speaking to the student leadership, like it would be great if every grade level took a month or each advisory had an opportunity to, to host something that they planned. Like, I feel like we could lean in on you guys way more and take the burden off of some other, some other teachers to like, here, what do you want to, what do you want to celebrate? Like, and what does that look like? So I really appreciate you bringing that up. I think like more community partnerships too would be a really cool thing to do like partnering with like the food shelf or just something that we could all put effort into would be like really cool because including everyone is even if they don't have kids that go to the school or it would just make it a better environment to know that like people care about your school well-being at school and I think just doing more outside of school for it would be better too. Mm -hmm. No, I just <laughs> I just wanted to try to think back to seventh grade here and try to, did we have full, like I feel like we had full seventh grade meetings. We did, we had, yes. um, so that you were a seventh grader like the year that we stopped for right. COVID, right? Mm -hmm. Yes. Okay, yes, and we used to, I think once a month, yeah. do a grade level yes. community meeting. Yes. yes. And we would all go, I think we'd do like a meeting in the gyms, yeah. or different grade levels had different places. Like we day. always went to the classrooms with the dividers. Mm -hmm. yeah. I just yeah. opened up the yeah. dividers. Yeah. All right. Yeah. That'd be a good thing. Right. Yeah, I think, to I the grade think level. Absolutely. Now that we can like yeah. communicate yeah, that would be great to bring mm -hmm. back, I think. And I think last year the eighth grade team sort of held on to that a little. Didn't you guys do mm -hmm. more meetings and recognition like outside last year sometimes? We not we full. Did. We did a class. Well, so that it was hybrid, so it was half the eighth yeah. grade on one day yeah. and then we do so half the next feel. day. So it didn't yeah. it didn't feel as big yeah. as it would have when you were seventh graders. I have a question. Ms. Floyd and I have talked about this quite a bit, so Jesse, what you said just reminded me of it. Like, We've thought before like how great it would be 
if we identified some community partnerships like that, like the food shelf or the veterans home in Northfield or, you know, some different um, organizations we could work with and actually like assign an advisory mm -hmm. to work with them and to, you know, that would be your community partner to have community service with mm -hmm. throughout the year and then we could have competitions for you know which advisories put more time into their work with these organizations and I don't know we've talked about that a lot and I just wonder mm -hmm. what you all or or the group it. could choose their own right. partner and um, yeah. a long time ago there's a lot of like small farms around here too like going and picking crops yeah. for, like and being able to like mm -hmm. have a farmer's market or something like at school would be something super cool Community garden. Yes. <laughs> we tried for the I know. He and I are in. Um, we are just about out of time for this portion. As the timekeeper. Yes, thank you. You're welcome. I just wanted to say how, like, I feel if we did do that, it would be really, like, successful for us to get closer to our community and, like, us all be connected in a way to, like, be like, oh, well, the school's actually been put effort and we're actually helping each other out in a way and not just, like, schools here and, like, they're doing their own thing. Like, we can all be a community and help each other out and actually have good conversations throughout our classes about all this stuff, like, with just new farming. That would be great to do for science classes. Reflection. We can make anything. Very true. Tomorrow I'll walk into class. Two paragraph essay. What happened last night? No, you won't have to do that. Does anyone want to chime in before we shift gears to our next? Do you want me to keep sure? Going? Okay. So in the past, like typically when we've done it's called an affinity map, and usually we do it up on a wall. And that's why I'm sorry, I like totally invaded your space. And I was like, why that weird in that one spot of all things? I actually think given the the size that it makes sense to just put the paper down on the table and we'll just okay. map it there. Does that make sense? Mm -hmm. Um but I was gonna put the paper down just in case we wanted to say that we could roll it up instead of trying to like deal with all the things on the surface. Okay, so I'm gonna, let me give you the prompt first so you can think about it and then I'll move some stickies onto this table right behind John. Um, so one of the things that seemed to work really well when Lisa and I were rolling fellows and thinking about like some major school transformation um, and it was focused on advisory at the time, but I think it's applicable to any kind of like revisiting your school culture and climate and how do we kind of like reset or, you know, how do we move on from here in a more positive way? I think it can be really helpful to focus on our bright spots, like the things that go really well. And often in education, we hear like asset-based, you know, that word asset, like, oh yeah, let's do, let's focus on our assets. And I think there's a difference between our bright spots and our assets. Like, we have some strengths as a school that you might be like, oh, there's an asset, there's an asset. Um, but what I'd like you to think about right now is both, like, as community members and students and educators, like, where are the bright spots? Like, what makes you smile? What brings you joy? Like when your kids come home, like what do they what do they share that they're happy about? Like there are certain strengths that we have. Like a school can have a strong music program, and that can be an asset. Or we could have a strong tech team, and our internet could be flawless. <laughs> or you know, there are things that are assets that we can think about. Like, yeah, that works well for the school. But I think in starting off rethinking. Um, what our culture feels like within the school is like kind of what you were saying, like what brings us joy? What makes you happy? So I'm gonna put some paper down and there are lots of sticky notes and markers and pens. and pens. 
And so what I'm going to ask people to do once I have this the bigger paper down on the table is just on on each sticky note, you guys are familiar with this process too, like just how many bright spots can you think of? Just one on each sticky note. What are the bright spots? When you think about our school, when you think about what happens to your kids at school or what they experience or what you experience, like what are the bright spots? Okay. So I'm thinking about bright spots and I'll put I'll put this paper down. And then we will put it on this bigger Yep, and you're gonna because we're gonna move them later. Okay. So there's a reason that we're not writing right on there.
Mrs. 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 We're brainstorming how we can make it work. If you want any opinions, I think we have to get all of them. Yes. Got it. He's DJ both, yeah. yeah. Okay, Expertly. so typically this works better when there's lots and lots of stickies. Or lot, we weren't sure how many people we would have or if we would have multiple groups. So the next part of what's called an, an affinity map is to silently just walk around and notice what's on the stickies and start to create groups of things that feel similar, that they fit in the same category. And it's okay if you silently move one to one spot and somebody else moves it to a different spot. We're not gonna drop paper scissor or have hard feelings about the moving of the sticky notes. Um, but we'll just notice as we kind of walk around and start moving the sticky notes into groups, like where are the categories that our bright spots fit into. So I invite you now to come up and just take a look, wander around, and move the stickies that you feel like fit together.
just going to invite you all to stand up and circle around that button and that will give you an opportunity to move anything that you feel like maybe is lost in wandering or doesn't feel like it's in the right place. and the learning and how all of that's mixed together, which makes me wonder if Kara's pyramids should be over yeah. here yeah. Mm -hmm. um, by aha moments and, and those things, because I think it is so relationship-based. Mm -hmm. I, I wouldn't be a part of a pyramid for anybody I didn't really care about. Or trust. Or right. trust. <laughs> right. That's true. Yeah. Yeah. Especially if you're up higher. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> what I heard in the circle and I see here is a strong desire for kids to have interpersonal relationships, connectivity with other people, whether it be in the school or in the community. Um, I mean, that's what all of this is here. Uh, to some extent, that's what this is here. And so this is here. Um, it's, and I think that's a, a after effect of COVID. Um, there was a lot of isolation you know, remote learning, kids didn't get together like they did. And I, I just, as humans, I think we just desire to interact with one another. And that was taken away for a year and a half. And I, I hear them loud and clear saying that in many different ways. And I think I see it on this table too, that that's a bright spot for them if they can get back to that and really strengthen that in the future. Um, dedicated teachers, and like I see a couple about teachers, but having teachers that actually care and that you can have like a separate kind of relationship with other than just here's work and do it, like actually talking to your students makes it makes me want to be there. Like when there's a teacher that doesn't have a desire to feel like they want to be in the classroom, that just brings the whole classroom down and makes them not want to be there either so 
just involving yourself with people's lives, I feel like, makes a big difference. And sorting out through all the student nominations for teacher awards, and takes me a really long time because I've been reading every bit of the Google form, and it's really inspiring. Mm -hmm. It's wonderful. <laughs> you're looking at me like I have something to say. Usually, you're not obligated. You're, you're, uh, obligated. I just like that so many people put down stuff about me, is it? So that's what I'm happy about. It's also like really, it gets your brain working. Like, what can we do that our school community or anybody around us in our community will like and actually take a deep breath from and watch? I like PBLs a lot too. I take a food systems PBL, which also includes an English credit into it because we like write what stuff means to us and stuff like that. And just PBLs in general, because when you're in ninth grade, like you don't get mixed with a lot of other grades per se. Like, but in PBLs, like my food systems PBL, I have twelfth graders, eleventh graders, like all high schools, and just people that I don't usually get to see, and it it definitely helps and puts me out there more to do stuff that I wouldn't usually do. That's a really good point. Like, mm -hmm. It yeah. kind of pushes you to take those healthy risks. Mm -hmm. <coughs> That's kind of what was resonating with me too, like when you were talking about Innovation Center, and you were talking about bringing joy, and like those fun moments, like they don't have to be in isolation. Like we could be, like I'm watching interactions in the Innovation Center where people are helping each other, mm -hmm. and they're still laughing over something that happened. You know, you still have that social piece that connects you. You're still having fun. And I think that our PBLs and our ILOs, to some extent, like provide that opportunity for you to feel that human connection, still be productive and hitting learning targets and demonstrating your proficiency in areas. But you're having fun during that time. And you're like, oh, we got through that. <laughs> like, we did this activity. Now Mrs. Bowers going to make me write about it. But some of you have already said, like, what did you say? Did I have, what was the word you used? I have, uh, I think it was an astronomical amount to write about this. Mm -hmm. yeah. yeah. Yeah, because you did something. Oh, well, that was just today. Yeah. 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 yeah, and I just think that's so cool that that's what is resonating with me right now. Like, how do we put more music, like, the music is awesome. How do we put that into, like, it brings us joy. How do we bring that into our everyday more often if it brings us to it? in your everyday. It is. We so. might have to throw a pyramid right in front of us. <laughs> <laughs> we start our morning with it. Yes. And so what other ways can we like maintain a good vibe after the morning music is <laughs> is over and you've moved into your classrooms like today? watching ninth graders move from RTCC, which was really a great experience mm -hmm. to just go check everything out. And the feeling when we moved back to classrooms was like, oh, now we have to go back to sit in the chair and do, <laughs> and do what we have to do, which fortunately wasn't your circumstance, being in seventh grade English, but your seventh grade English. But like, there was a definite vibe of like, what can we do? How can we emulate the things that are successful in a more hands-on, student-propelled curriculum. And I'm hearing all of you reflect on this positive experience in the Innovation Center, and I'm wondering if that translates into, like, we're going to offer an intro to engineering out of that space, and we're going to offer um, innovation management out of that space, and other classes. Do you feel like your experience um, and building games last year and then this year going down there in English class helps you think about yourself in that setting, whether or not you see yourself as someone who would want to work with all of that technology usually. Yeah. 
I think things like that where we actually do hands-on stuff pushes you like I wouldn't usually pick out an animal to describe myself mm -hmm. so just different projects like that push you to think more about who you are what you want to be what you want to do okay. yeah yeah I just think it means a lot yeah, it's a different way of reflecting. Like, mm -hmm. I can say, open to the next blank page in your writer's journal, and everybody goes, uh. It feels good to talk about yourself. Not sometimes even, not too. even the noise. It's just like, <laughs> you can tell. Yeah, no, the, the yeah. feeling in the room saying, Yeah, I like, like, so so like a <laughs> But when I'm like, hey, tell us about your animal, everybody's like, yeah. Like, Here's this hands on thing that I did that I created that I'm connected to now. And yes, I want to talk about it. Mm -hmm. Just finding more ways to to lift you up in in all of the, like you have to hit the performance indicators, but how do you do them while you're feeling lifted up as opposed to feeling like, and here we go with the peer paragraph. Research, <laughs> Research paper. Research <laughs> paper, yes. Well, the thing is, is I get that you have to do that stuff, and I think it's good practice to do that stuff, but not all the time, so. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, I just want to say something about the ILOs because I think those are great for people who, um, you know, are, like to work independently, like myself. I take ILO PE, and so I'm always outside when I'm at home doing stuff and, you know, working on stuff. And so I enjoy, you know, kind of the independence of that. Um, I don't know if I would take another course as an ILO, only because I feel like ILO PE is way different than any other because other course you have to study for and you know do homework even though you know exercise is your homework for ILOP but I just I just enjoy ILOs having that kind of you know, independence and do you journal for your PE ILO? I do yeah I do every week and read some articles uh, actually I don't even have to do the articles okay <laughs> but um, no what I do is I just you know I go do whatever I do at home and then I just write about it and Check and there you mm -hmm. go. Okay. Yeah, and an ILO looks different in every content area, mm -hmm. for sure. But that's why it's an independent learning opportunity, right? It's tailored to you and what your needs are and mm -hmm. how we can fulfill your graduation requirements and still like provide something that resonates with you as a student. Mm -hmm. All right. So. Thoughts. I think we can. Should we come back together? We're getting right down to time, so uh, maybe just giving an opportunity to ask any questions that anybody has, and then we could just kind of check out for the night. The quick check. -in. Any questions or things that are bubbling up for you? Right. So just in our last little checkout round, again, I have my imaginary talking piece <laughs> that I can hopefully hand to you, Katie. Just like one word that's resonating with you now after this experience with our small group. Just our first step into community one that I hope just spread the word and we're going to keep talking about like what can we do to be better and kind of reset after a pandemic and come back together and feel really positive and great in our school environment. So just thinking about all of that and your experience tonight, what's one word that's resonating with you right now? Energy. Joy. Thoughtfulness. Comfort. Interactiveness. Motivation. Hopeful. Communication. Hopeful is mine too. Mine too. Mm -hmm. um, absolutely. Um, uh, re <laughs> <laughs> It's now. It is now. Yeah. Invigorated. Yeah. I'm excited. Thank you all for coming. Yeah, enjoy Thank you for all of your, yeah. your yeah. thoughts and appreciate it. Gives yeah. us ideas to springboard us into our forums in the fall. Thank you. Thank, Thank you for your time. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Especially in June.